maybe maybe it'll come up on a uh, another another well month. hey all right we are recording now did anyone um, have any dreams last night no i'm not I'm <laughs> no gonna, i did not, not I'm not gonna fake. I'm not gonna fake the story, Stacy. It was a segue. She was trying. She was trying to get me to tell the story again for the cameras, but you'll have to. You'll have to tell the art historians when they ask you. Okay. Indeed. Um, let's go around the horn. I feel like the. I feel like the hardest one, but like the most interesting one, is probably the paper airplane. And I've never drawn this before, so um, all I do know is that we have two triangular wings. Um, I might. And then there's like the folded center. So I and so you get the inside of the inside of the plane and then the outside of the plane. So I'm I, I try it like this. All right. So if I draw the plane from the side, there's going to be this wing. And then in theory, excuse me, Trevor, have, you're going off the uh, screen. It's annoying. Yeah. With the tail of the plane. Okay. Let me move my paper over. It was like stuck with the. Uh, was stuck on the so i'm like just trying to th think through the paper airplane why isn't it staying on there okay yeah so there's the folded center so it's a should be a large triangle and then it comes to a point here so this is like the top and this is the side this is where you could like put you know de details <clears throat> um I drew mine where I only see the top and, and then not the, you know how it's like opening? Like these should be, they should stay connected in theory. Um, all right, so let me draw it the way this guy has it. So, so weird. So I always wanna to try to start in the center of things, but maybe I'll just draw the triangle of the wing that's close to us. Let's just try that. So this is the middle. And then this is the angled wing that's facing us. That's this bottom part here. And then we can draw the, the part where the airplane opens up and you can see inside the crack. And then this is the side of the plane where that little dot would be. Like this is where you would, that's where the side thing would be. And then we'll do another wing in perspective so it's got to be smaller. This wing here has got to be smaller than this back wing there. Yeah. It is definitely the hardest, which is why it's like the warm up. I'm going to shade the inside of this so you can kind of tell that that is an opening. And I don't know if the blue paper is problematic. Maybe the yellow paper is better. But I don't know how I can might make this airplane look like it's flying. Let's zoom out a little bit. Oh, I like that. How'd you do? Yeah. yeah, good. That's good. That is good. Um, the nice thing about this one is that out of all of these objects, uh, uh, it is very three dimensional, meaning we're seeing the top planes of both wings, the inside plane, and the outside of the, uh, the fold part. All right, let's try the next one. Um, let's try this gravy boat. Now, the gravy boat, I love gravy. I love pouring yeah. gravy, I love making gravy, I love everything about gravy. I actually don't own a gravy boat, but my mom does. And, you know, I'm thinking about Thanksgiving here, and she's got one that's got a base, mm -hmm. like an upside down base on it. Um, all right, so let's first maybe try the bowl. Um, Trevor, do you want to check the weight room? Yep, I did. There's no one else. It was good. Okay. Um, all right, so I'm going to do the bowl part, and we need a spout. We need the gravy bowl where all the gravy sits. And then there's this long, graceful spout. Almost looks like a bird, like the head of a bird. And then there's like the gravy handle. So I'm gonna do the, the bowl part. Make it maybe even a little bit bigger. And then it comes up and that's gonna turn into the spout. And I think the most elegant part is either the, you know, the S curve that leads up to the front of the spout or the S curve that leads from the spout um, into the handle. Yeah, I like Actually, that. It, I mean, it is, it is in fact very beautiful um, without the mm. handle, or without the base, um, but it's just this collection of S curves um, you know, into this bowl. Um, I'm gonna attach the, the handle. I can maybe go the inside of the handle and then I'll do the outside of the handle. Kind of maintaining a natural balance between like the size of the gravy bowl. My handle looks a little big. 
and it looks like it attaches a little bit low. Anyway, this the bowl, the bowl part on my mom's has the structure and it also has like a border. Like there's it's actually more, it's got like a pattern on here. Mm -hmm. And we're not seeing, you know, and actually hers has a little spiral right there. That's cool. Does hers we're, have we're coordinating? Not seeing in, we're not seeing in it, you know what I mean? And you could even make it shiny, maybe like reflect something, you know, part of the part of the table that it's resting on. Have a little drop, a little glit gravy on here. So on my notes, gentlemen, I have um I have objects. These are the hidden objects in the larger um picture of the hidden pictures, like the so these are like overly simplified drawings. And the whole point of them is to like draw, you know, draw the easy one to get warmed up, but also embellish on it. So like make it cool, make it better, make it more interesting. So adding the reflections, adding a little drip of gravy, adding the spiral handle, you know, putting on the base. That is actually what we're supposed to be doing. Um, I didn't, I didn't mention it in the beginning. So like copy it accurately, but you know, also make it better. You know, like the flashlight is a series of trapezoids, um, but you know, we can add more details to it. I mean, I have one that has a, uh, you can know, make it showing the light. Um, I have one that's got like a radio on it. Um, I had a gravy boat that also had a rectangular tray or plate, if you will, that the boat sat on so that yeah, the, yeah. the drippings would drip onto that plate, not onto your tablecloth or table. Yeah, I don't have room for that, but that's a really good idea. Um, maybe we could add some shadows at the bottom. You know, the underside of the underside of the handle could be in shadow, both on the top of the handle and the bottom of the handle. That's kind of interesting. But and we don't need to go crazy on the gravy. Oh, we could do the um, you know, that it's hot gravy. Make it look like it's hot. That was interesting. I was talking to uh, my buddy whose kid was um, they were gardening. And they sprayed the mist. They sprayed like the mist from the hose. And the kid was like, is that, is that smoke? And they're like, no, actually smoke is, you know, smoke is from, you know, the, the, you know, the, from burning something. And it's just like, I was thinking how similar like water vapor, like the steam off of this, mm -hmm. it, you could easily confuse steam off of a hot object or mist from a hose with smoke, even though like water vapor is completely different. And mist is actually different even than, um, you know, steam. Anyway, I thought that was kind of interesting. Um, all right, let's do these uh, trapezoids of the flashlight. I'm gonna do the flashlight um, first, you know, two dimensionally, meaning it's just shapes and there's not really a suggestion in the third dimension. Um, Miles, this might remind you of the, uh, you know, the barrel of that tank gun. Oh yeah. Mm-hmm. You know, it might have an end cap on it. Might have a, it's, this is a switch, you know, the on and off switch. Um, you know, the light is coming out from here. I'm gonna try this one in the third dimension. So I'm gonna use an ellipse, which is the, um, this is the actual light bulb part. And then I'm gonna make it have a plastic uh, frame. And maybe there's a sheet of, plastic on there the lights coming out of here and then i'll build a you know if this has stripes on it up here this one will have stripes on it on the side make it get a little bit smaller and then do an end cap in here <clears throat> it's interesting to move you know in in a design view we drew a tank yesterday in, my, in the in the, like the other gilman class um, and we didn't really even go into the third dimension at all. We just drew everything from this point of view, the, uh, the side view. And then you can imagine like a tank, it's got, the, it's got the top, it's got the blaster, it's got the treads, it's got the, the cover, and then the treads go like this, and then you see the circles from the side. We didn't even get, oh, it's off screen again, sorry guys. We didn't even get to pop that into the third dimension, which, you know, on here, you could see it kind of like a blaster. Then you'd see a little of the top of the tank and mm -hmm. a little the side of the tank and like the front. So then all of these wheels on the side, not tires, but wheels, you know, they would they'd be seen from an angle. God, I keep going off screen. Maybe I just zoom out completely. Sorry. That's that. better. There you go. 
It's uh, 117. You're right, Stace. It always goes longer. Um, all right, so this is this is 2D, you know, the tank and the flashlight, and this is the suggestion of the 3D. Um, actual 3D is when you sculpt, when you're actually working in the third dimension. Um, but drawing in the 3D, you know, is suggesting that there's like the top of the tank, the side of the tank, top of the tank, side of the treads. Anyway, hopefully that's helpful. Um, Let's keep going with this megaphone. Well, actually, well, maybe take maybe take one minute and finish. I feel like I'm drawing kind of fast. Am I going too fast? Stace, how are your drawings going? I'm actually just honing in on time right now. I've not started drawing on our on the schedule for time. Okay. And check check the waiting room. Good. All right. Yeah, let's do the megaphone. The megaphone actually is going to be a very similar form to the flashlight. Um, you get an ellipse where the opening of it is, and then you're going to get the um, conical or triangular side, and that's got a handle, very 2D, you know, like a series of two squares. <clears throat> I kind of want to see it attaching to the side. You know, that was like glued on or taped on or stapled on. I've seen a lot of these things are actually stapled. I don't know if they were made out of paper. Mm -hmm. And this is the part where it has the mouthpiece where you'd yell into. And so instead of the light being represented like this, you could make, you know, somebody shouting into the megaphone. Um, any guys row? I guess on the rowing team, there's a uh, there's a, a position in a, a in the, like the competitive rowing um, where they're called coxswains, and their only job is to yell at the guys doing the rowing so that they go at the same pace to encourage them and also go at the same pace. Yeah, my mom was a rower. Nice. Was she? Did she row, or was she actually a coxswain? I um. I think she was a rower, but she may have been a coxswain. Yeah, mm -hmm. I mean, in like in like men's boats, you know, in everybody's boat, I guess you're just trying to carry the least amount of weight. So a lot of times, like even on men's teams, women will be coxswains because they are so you know they're so light. Anyway, so these these representations are sound waves. You know, sound waves, not uh, not blasts from. Uh, flower power over here, the blast from the uh, barrel of the tank, which is actually explosives versus the, the blast from the light from the bulb and then sound. I, that's so cool. Um, those are all different ways of like suggestion, suggesting like, um, you know, the movement of um, one movement of sound, the other movement of light and the other movement of like an actual projectile going in a direction. Can you move your paper up just about a half inch? Yeah. And it's uh, 121. Okay. I think we'll have plenty. We're going to have time to do the, the next thing. Uh, right. A little bit. Um, we can also make it sound like music. So there's just a music note. So I love, I love when um, we, you have like kind of compound shapes that have so recognizable of, a, of an idea. So this is just a circle combined with a rectangle attached to an S-curve, almost like a flag. Um, mm -hmm. And it's a 3D. I mean, you can make them 2D, you know, or you can go, um, but I, these are all 2D rather, but you can make them solid or you can make them uh, just thicker shapes. Music. And if you guys know music, you can, you have like, there's other notes that you can. Include. I love music, yeah. What are, what are some other notes? Um, a eighth note, or no, that is an eighth note, a uh, sixteenth note. And that's when they're all, a bunch of them are together? Yeah. And isn't there a note similar to the one, oh, you just threw it. Never mind. I don't know if that's <laughs> right. I had a very difficult time uh, reading music when I was in school, on, like in elementary school. 
Because <clears throat> all the notes in my mind, all the notes were so similar. I was, oh, yeah. yeah. Robert, hold that a little bit away from the uh, screen and freeze. Thank you. Yeah, nice job. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So my, my page looks kind of like a little bit of a disaster, but I mean, it's just, I'm just sketching. I didn't, I wasn't intentionally trying to include all of these. They're kind of just like separate elements. Nice. Um, ben, the, hold that further from the screen. Good. Very good. And freeze it. Yeah, these look good. These Very cool. nice. I like the steam coming out of your gravy boat. <laughs> Love that gravy. And Miles, hold that nice and Muscle still Muscle. and a little perfect. Great. And Robert, you can hold that up again. That's good. A little closer to you. Keep going, keep going and freeze it. A little for closer away from the screen. There you go. Very good. I'm gonna switch colors um, just cause that blue is a little bit obnoxious. Um, I'm telling you we're gonna have to draw that. <laughs> <laughs> It's not, it's not as bad as you might think, actually. It's, uh, <laughs> it's an underwater theme. So the, what we're going to do is, um, I, I promise it's not that bad. It was actually only, there's only like five things that you have to draw. And I'm going to give you the strategy on how to do it, which is from, uh, we're going to go from the bottom down here. And we're going to go, you know, so there's this set of leaves at the bottom, which are just almost like lay, layered lettuce leaves. Then you got these, which are almost like, holy clouds are like clouds but have like holes in them and they're I think they're supposed to represent coral um and then we go into like this little row of dirt which is just super simple and then the whole goal of this thing so that's one two different types of uh you know um seaweed so the two different types of seaweed like seaweed actually lettuce seaweed and then coral then there's dirt behind that and then these are the ones that I wanted to get into because when we switch over, when the other guys start coming in, we're going to switch over to seahorses. Um, and, you know, we've got these like kind of tubes, these like little textured tubes um, that the seahorses are attached to, which is like actually kind of cute. Um, so the, what they offer is what she offers. Her name is Maggie Swanson. Um, I can show you the rest of the picture. I love this girl. She's kind of friends of the school, um, professional artist, super talented. And, um, what it, she does so well is that she moves from front to back in the picture, like one, two, three, four, five. And then there's these other ones that are off in the distance that look like, like almost like a decrepit city. Do you see how it looks like, it almost looks like a, 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 like a like skyscrapers that are like crumbling. That's like the final back one. Um, and it's just that it's a good excuse to like create in a coloring book, like <clears throat> things that you can color the same color. So each zone, I'm gonna call this like the lettuce zone. So if you come down here, you get the bottom. Um, we'll do these the groupings of lettuce, and you'll you be you'll be, you're gonna like. It's actually not that bad. Um, and the other fun part is is that this is a hidden picture. So there's hidden pictures in there. So you can either include the hidden pictures or you know leave them out. All right. So the first piece of lettuce is gonna come up. And then it's got the wiggles on the top. Now the other attributes to this is that it's got these kind of like parallel straight lines at the base of the flat of the of the piece of lettuce. And then there's like a couple spaced out dots. So this little thing that I just started, that's what you need to know for this whole cluster. So there's like another cluster here. We go up, and then we'll get these little arched. They're basically the, the edges of, um, it's just the edges of the lettuce. And we'll do some straight lines. And I think I'm gonna go right off the edge of the page over on my left side. So do the arches, we'll do a couple dots and then a couple straight lines. The interesting thing is that when you have this vocabulary figured out, then you can make your own clusters. So the next one is like where the hat is. I could do a cluster arc, arc. I could add the hat if I wanted to. The reason that hat works is because the top of the hat has a, 
the similar arch that the lettuce has. So we'll pull this down. Mm -hmm. And those uh, vertical lines. Yes, and the vertical lines of the side of the hat. Mm -hmm. So the thing that sticks out from that shape is the brim. <clears throat> There's another one, we could do the heart first. So why don't we do the heart and then we'll camouflage that heart inside another leaf. I might leave the open book out. Straight lines, coupled circles, straight lines, straight lines that, the, that show that one, it shows that the straight lines do two things. They give it a texture and they make it known that you know the 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 part of the lettuce with the heart in it is behind this one and then this one is behind that one so when all else fails it offers a texture and a layering experience because this is this doesn't have tone um if we had like blending we could shade in this whole area and make you know the lettuce one lettuce dark and the other lettuce light because light comes comes forward dark recedes so she's using a texture she's also darkening it Let's do one more layer before we get into the other coral. I'm gonna come up, arc, arc across, and we'll just have it disappear. Straight lines, straight lines, a couple circles. <clears throat> we have this like really nice vocabulary now for this front layer. And it's not, and I'm not copying what she's doing, but I am imitating her code making for this first layer of seaweed. I mean, and the only reason you know it's seaweed is because of the whole rest of the picture. We're at the bottom of the ocean here. And she doesn't get to use any color. Mm. So this is kind of cool. Do you see these um, these little squiggles in this corner? I like these little, they look like little hot dogs. So I think I'm gonna put in these little hot dogs and they just got like little S curves to them. We'll do the ones in front and it's just gonna fill out the area we'll do ones behind it it's just it's another type of seaweed um that's going to be different from the lettuce oh that's fun those yes oh you guys can't see you can't see that there's a little starfish there a little starfish he's so cute the starfish has got you know, five tentacles and some dots. The um, the sand that's behind our little hot dogs is just speckled. There's like little dots, circles. And it's, it's way, there's kind of more of it on, so if you have extra paper, you can make your sand with the starfish sand, I should say, you can make that a little bigger. I'm just running out of room. Um, there were there, the reason I actually chose this piece was not for what we just drew down here. It was for these. Uh, they're they're. I thought they were like the um the coral. A I love coral. Um B I love Maggie Swanson, who's this artist. C um, I think we can draw this coral really nicely because um, it looks like clouds to me. It looks like clouds with like spots on it. Um, and then I wanted to get up and reward myself with these big tubes up here. I didn't even notice these little tubes at the bottom. Um, these big tubes with the with the uh, seahorses. All right, so let's try this next round. Um, Maggie, she's so amazing. Um, okay, so in between, I, I've just noticed here before we even get to the clouds with the dots, there's these little fan. There's these little fan um, fan plants. So fan. I love that shape. They like sprout out in like a V, like a like a curving V, almost like a like you would the way you draw a bird, and then you can link up the tops with the fan. Gorgeous, goodness gracious! Um, all right, so these might be my favorite ones that I didn't even notice in the beginning. Um, I'm looking at these clusters right here, so I'm going to add more because I think they're pretty, and you can overlap them. And my piece looks like, looks like it's a lot longer sideways. Um, you could do the arc of the top of the fan 
and then add the sides of the fan. You can start with the sides of the fan and then add the little curving top. And there's a side of me that thinks that might even, I guess it's definitely a plant. I was thinking it could be even a shell. Um, believe it or not, once you come up with, you know, these little, these little fresh um, ideas, you can use them and repeat them and make your own composition. I am trying to teach artistic independence. Um, it's yes, we are copying and it is a little, um, it might seem like, you know, we're just copying what this other lady's doing, but it's really not. It's just, I'm, I'm just trying to, I, I want you to like take something that I know you can draw that everybody that you can in fact draw and um, make your own picture out of it. Okay, I think we now deserve to have the coral. So I'm gonna use this like little wiggle. Yeah. I was gonna do clouds, like, like when I say clouds, I mean like an actual cloud shape like this. Um, but I think they're a little more complicated than that. I think they actually have like, almost like little teardrops or something. Do you know that there's such a thing called mushroom coral, Trevor? Does this look like mushroom coral? No, but it, I know how much you like mushrooms. <laughs> and I, I'm familiar yeah, I, with yeah. some coral. The mushroom coral actually has like little dots throughout, not like the one you're, this, not like, the one depicted here, but similar. So I'm checking it out, and I, I mean, I'll, I'll look. It. I'll look it up. The actual one. Um, it looks like this little. We'll call it the mushroom coral, but this little teardrop version. It does have some cloud shapes, which is kind of interesting, which is why I gravitated towards using that like way of explaining it. But it's definitely a curve out curve in curve out curve in curve mm -hmm. out curve in curve out and then there are some that just like curve out curve out and then curve in curve out curve out curve in curve out i don't know if that this is even like making sense to you all but now i can add these little dots some are like specks and then some are circles but they are suggestions that there's poor there's like the porous nature of this coral and there's holes in it. So in some in some ways, it's like, is it like a a hole in the coral, or is it actually a hole through the coral, like through to the other side? And I don't really know. And this is the the beauty of studying really good illustrators. Um, the beauty of studying illustrators is that um, they are able to they're basically able to like take something that's super complex and then simplify it. And, you know, sometimes it looks like nature, sometimes it, it doesn't. Um, it just winds up becoming like, you know, a series of mark making. All right, so gentlemen, um, do you guys know what grade Robert uh, Randolph is in and Gil? Are they, is this the next round coming He's in? He's in fourth with okay. me, Benjamin, and with me and Benjamin. All right, sweet. So this is the um, this is the next round. So I'm basically when they come in, boys. I'm gonna. It doesn't look like he's here. Though. I'm gonna. I know. I'm about to let him in. I'm gonna finish off the coral. I'm just letting you guys know. I'm gonna finish off the coral, and then we're gonna start the uh, tubes so that they can join. Um, they can join in. I might even like you know zoom in a little bit. So just to give you a heads up, that's happening. All right, let me let these guys in, and I'll fill them in. Cool. 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 <clears throat> hey guys, can you guys hear me? I got to change my view of everything. Yeah, All, right, we got so, you. All right, if you guys just came in, uh, make sure you mute your cameras or not cameras, God. No, mute your, uh, your speakers. And then I think some people are still joining. Um, I'm, we're not gonna do the, um, we're not gonna, you're not gonna do this bottom part, but you are gonna start with this bed, it's gonna basically be a zone of coral. And let me show you how we draw the coral. Oh no, I'm trying to get everybody in here. <clears throat> the coral is um, almost like a, a, it's almost like a series of wiggles with these teardrops. So it's like squiggles out and then in 
out and in, almost like a hairpin turn to a road. And they squiggle out and in, out and in. We're gonna, I'm a, we're gonna build the, like kind of this base of coral. And then we're gonna draw the tubed coral and the, uh, and the seahorses on top. Anyone else waiting to come in? No, everyone's in right now, but I don't see, did they drop off? Yeah, I think Joe just left. What about Gil? He just. Let's see if he tries to get back in. <clears throat> so I'm going to add a um, basically the solid layer separating the work that we've already done from the work that we're about to do. Here he comes, he's back in it. All right, sweet. Um, is coral orange, do you think? Um, hey, Gil, all can all you mute your mic? Is... Hello. The one that you were oh, getting man. ready to, to do is actually a form of a branching. Coral. Hello. Hey, Gil. Um, Listen, Gil, what I'm, draw what I'm drawing right here, I'm drawing the, um, this orange line. And this orange line that I'm filling in, that's basically where you're going to start, okay? It's going to be the top of the coral that we just made. So you're gonna, we're going to start from this orange line, and we're going to go up from there. Does that sound good? So almost like if, it's the, if this is your picture, you almost want to set up a a line that looks like this. It goes curving in and out. It's like this squiggle. And this is gonna be the very bottom of the picture. So your pictures are gonna like start here. Does that make sense? Squiggle, 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 squiggle. Um, and then from there, we're gonna go from this, we don't, we, don't, we don't have to draw the bat, but you could draw the bat if you wanted to. And we're gonna go up into this tubed um, this tube series of coral. That's going to be it like kind of looks um, like a like a, a hippopotamus. What looks because, like because um, the bat yes. from an angle, like the nose. Just everything. Well, let's get to the bottom. Let's get to the bottom of that. Actually, um, Gil, this is gonna, this is going to be your warm up. You ready for this? Um, let me zoom in even a little bit further. And Trevor, that's actually a form of an elk horn coral. How do you know that, Stacy? I'm a diver. You are a diver. I'm gonna write that. Elk, elk horn, H-O-R-N. Yeah, there are several types of elk horn. And then this is an elk horn, but I'm also gonna look up the other ones because I'm not sure of them these so tube, you can find the tube ones pretty easily um all right so bats we're gonna draw the bat and i'm gonna draw the bat really big just because i think it'll be fun um the bat for some reason has these like mouse ears i mean which is fine we're gonna do the one ear we'll do the top of the head do the other ear uh is that alexander good to see you boss um can you see this do you see this bat in here that I'm shading purple? We're going to draw the bat first. That's going to be like the starting point for this epic coral system. <clears throat> All right, so the bats have two uh, ears, two eyes. Um, it's got a nose in the middle and then two fangs. <laughs> so I know it doesn't have that, but you might as well put that in there. I thought it was going to be a Mickey. A Mickey Mouse at first. <laughs> yeah, now, now it's this very scary Mickey Mouse. We'll do one arch of the wing on this side, one arch of the wing on this side. And then, yeah, everybody's drawn Batman symbols. There's concaves that represent the, um, you know, kind of the webbing of the bat's wings. So we got one, two, three, 
one, two, three. I had to connect. I just can I quickly show you a, a picture of a beautiful this is actually an elk a form of elkhorn coral yeah. that's a stunning purple. So the, el, so the elkhorn coral is what we're about to draw. Yeah. Yeah, that is sweet. Yeah, it's beautiful. That is beautiful. Um, all right. Are you guys up for that? I mean, let's do the let's start the elkhorn. Um, this is the one we're going to start What's with. Elkhorn? I don't even know what the heck Elkhorn is. Yes, I'm sorry. It's, the um, we're this is an underwater scene. So oh, sorry, sorry. Up. No, it's fine. You've got the seahorse. The seahorses are like attaching themselves to it, and I mean, I guess I understand why. It, I mean, they look like Elkhorns. Oh, you know what? You could, I made a mistake. You could this take is this is staghorn coral. Staghorn. Yeah, sorry about that. No, that's fine. I mean, it's not that far off, staghorn. No, staghorn. I thought I was muted before. Sorry. <laughs> I was like that. Now we heard like what's in your in your inner thoughts. <laughs> Imagine if everyone could hear your inner thoughts. I don't even know what this is. All right, so the um, let's do this S curve. Let's not worry about getting the textures just yet. So let's just see if we can build the major S. And you can see it's an S. It's actually a backwards S. So we'll do the backwards S and it's gonna lead up to the very tip of this piece of coral. And it's not the easiest thing in the world. And if you notice the outside has all this irregular texture to it. So as you draw the line, I even made mine probably a little bit too dark, but I wanted you to be able to see what I was doing. So we got this S curve and then like, and, and horns and deer horns are actually like that too. I don't know if you've ever sketched a deer horn, but there's like this major, you know, thick edge or bottom. And then like they grow out almost like branches up a tree. So there's what I can tell, all, basically all I can tell here is that, um, you know, you've got, let's just, let's just try it. Let's just do this. So we have the main um, trunk of this coral and then we're gonna get an attachment here, which is an arc. First attachment. Second attachment is gonna be here uh, a little bit on the other side, a little bit higher up. And it, it's a lot of curves. Um, I'm getting a very cactus vibe here. Um, mm -hmm. Kind of see that. So we got one side here, one side there, and then we'll do uh, this next one, which runs up this way. And this will ultimately be the one that the seahorse is attaching to. Nice, nice. Um, before we get into the other ones, I think we should kind of set up a little bit of a vocabulary for how we want the this, this one to actually look. So when I say like a vocabulary, I mean like there's these little arches, you know, these little, um, they're almost like little miniature smiles like a little, if you're drawing a smiley face and they mm -hmm. represent like little bumps in the side of our finish. So there's like a texture coral. Holy crap, dude, that's so good, Miles. That's good. Um, my only, I yeah, I, yeah, I, so you could, what I would do, Miles, is I would start to go through, you've got like the coloring book phase. Um, I would start to shade things. You want to decide what coral is light, what coral is dark, what coral is deep, deep dark, um, and then just basically shade in each one of these component parts. Um, my only okay. criticism, the only criticism I was gonna say is that with this elk horn or stag horn, I should say, um, I think we just let Will in here. Will, Miles, um, do you wanna hold that up again or wait till you're finished? It's a bunny. It's a bunny. Okay. Whatever you like. Let me just mute. Mute your, yeah. All right, well, no offense. Okay, hold but that I, uh, I further move. away from your screen. Keep going uh, a little more and freeze it. Thank you. So really, really quickly, um, did anyone ever think that coral could look like an egg, like fry, like an egg? You gotta see this. This is a form of coral. Wow. Do you really see the one that looks like an egg? Like right here. Um, Pretty wild, huh? So, 
So, gentlemen, the guys that just came in, um, I'm going to catch you. Get Anybody else need to be first? Speed. No. Um, may, I just need you to mute that. All right, everybody's kind of coming in. Um, we are drawing the tube coral up here, basically so we can segue into um, drawing uh, seahorses. So we're going to have like a, a kind of an epic seahorse drawing, um, but I want to draw this coral first. So you want to basically start with the C floor and then we're going to start with this S curve. And I think you can see the uh, what part I'm actually drawing. So this is the challenge. And what I was going to say, Miles, your drawing is beautiful, dude, but um, you need to figure out how to somehow keep it the same width going all the way up until the top. That's the only thing that is like kind of like the challenging part about this. Um, we're going to have a S curve and then you're going to attach the um, like a cactus. We're going to attach these arms. There's going to be a limb here. There's going to be a limb here. And I really am attempting to keep my, you know, the limbs the same thickness um, to each other, not necessarily the same thickness as the, the front. So that's the challenge. We're making the front cactus, which is this front S curve. Then we're going to do these other two cactuses. And then um, that's going to be your all's warm up. And then we will then switch over to the, um, the drawing of the day, which is the, um, the seahorse. And it is going to be kind of cool. Does anybody have any questions? Actually, no. If you don't have any questions, that would be good. Because then I don't have to hear the echo. <clears throat> um, all right, so here we go. I'm just going to keep going on this one, actually. Wonder if these guys got bumped off if they're just joining us. Welcome boys, welcome boys. Um, once you get the main cactus coral, you know, this is an underwater oh, scene. We're basically only, we're gonna basically be exploring underwater scenes uh, today. So I don't wanna repeat myself too much, but you wanna kind of draw something that looks like a cactus and then it's basically finding the texture of that coral. And I was, when I, in my other drawing, we've got the ground, we've got the, like the, the floor of the ocean, ocean floor. And then we have the cactus and the S curve of the main body and then the limbs. Um, the limbs attach and you can erase your lines if necessary. If you drew this too hard, um, you, know, you can erase the lines and make them a little bit lighter. Chances are you didn't draw too hard and you can like meld the line that you originally used. You can turn that line into a texture. And that's something that's like really important to learn how to do like in art. Um, we wanna find the texture and the nature of our coral. And then you just basically repeat it. How am I supposed all, to draw? Um, so the marks that you're gonna make are gonna be like little smiley faces. So like not not with two eyes, but an actual smile, but like just the smile. And you just repeat that over and over again. It might seem a little bit tedious, um, but if you have that cactus shape, if you have this larger S-curve, um, you can develop it. All right. Um, and we've got a big class. Please feel free to ask questions. Just do it quickly and then re-mute yourself. Um, this is going to lead into sketching the uh, seahorses. And these seahorses are not bad. The other one is going to be a lot bigger. All right, so I've got the outside limb, uh, which, you know, looks like a cucumber or something. And then we're going to try to texture this, both the silhouette, which is the outside line, and the inside line. <laughs> and I don't know if any of you have, uh, if you have um, colors, but the colors, you know, could help differentiate between the, uh, the different. I don't think we do. Yeah, I didn't think so. I, I teach a class as if there were no colors. Um, I, I do have colors. Okay, yeah, do it. Um, and you could choose like maybe two, maybe like a light orange and a dark orange. <clears throat> you could choose like a yellow and a green. 
you know, just choose any colors you want and then maybe do the outside line with one color and then the inside lines with another. Um, it's really up to you. And I'm just trying to, I mean, I didn't realize that the, uh, you know, once you draw the outside line, that's almost like the easy part, getting like this, the texture of the outside line. Um, it really, it, it, it's like a cucumber or like a pickle. The pickles have like little warts on them, like little bumps and that their outside is like irregular. Cause I think they, once they dry up and they get a little smaller, I guess when they're like younger, they're more ripply. <clears throat> All right, so that's the front one. And let's try the, uh, let's try a back one. So if this S curve, you know, if the swerve went this way, so concave, convex, we're gonna try the next one and I'm gonna come up this way from behind and then it's gonna curve up and I guess it kind of splits into a Y. That's interesting. So we'll get the, you can think about it like a tree trunk. So you come up with one side and keep the curve going. And then it's gonna turn into um, a series of branches. One branch. And then there's the top. And the, these are called guys that just came in. This particular type of coral is called an elk horn or a stag horn. So if you, if one of the things that can help you draw it is thinking about a, um, you know, antlers to a deer. I made this one way too big. In my defense, it was because the edge of the paper was there. All right, we'll go with it. Now, I did not include the uh, the seahorses at the moment. If you feel like you're up for drawing the seahorses, you know, please put them in. The seahorses happen to be one of the deadliest creatures in the sea, How is which that? is astounding to to most people. It's more stealth than shark, even. Oh my that's, God, that's insane. It's, it's because of the way that it can move through water undetected. And when it is near its prey, it jerks its head at a speed at which any other fish are nearby. It's completely undetected. So you're saying that's like how if seahorses were huge, they would be very deadly. For but humans. they're deadly even at this size, just not to big prey. Right. That's they're cool. actually known as the stuff of nightmares. But you'd never think that because they're so cute. They really are cute. Yeah. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So you're right. saying if they were like ginormous, we would all be dying. That's what I'm saying. We'd never, <laughs> I go, think that, we'd never go in the ocean. Well, they live in the sea. So. Well, I, That's the boss. I got you muted. Um, all right. Well, that's good. So that was our third. For the guys that um, came in um, from the beginning, that was like our third type of coral. For those of you that have just come in, um, hopefully the... Uh, Hopefully this wasn't too challenging and um, it started to make sense um, in the sense that we can combine it with like the look of a um, look of an antler. If you like an antler and a pickle came together, <laughs> you'd get this type of coral. Uh, but the, the marks are limited. You know what I mean? So we're trying to get like this irregular silhouette, like these bumps on the side that you see. And then you also get a texture inside. And you want it kind of evenly distributed throughout. And that was, you know, not a bad warm up. Oh, we got to get Teddy in here. Trevor, you were in the studio, correct? Yes, you are. I'm in the studio. Are you guys can, you can you show the boys your seahorse that you painted? Oh, yeah, I should pull that out. Yeah, I know um, these guys would love to see it. I will. Um, are you guys up for drawing some fish, though? We have, like, have an aquarium. Yeah, you need so let's sketch some fish. I'm still finishing my coral. Oh, but, okay. uh, I'll be ready. She has a two-minute warning. Okay. 
Yeah, let's do, um, if you have your coral and you're still working on it, you know, take your time. Um, I'm just gonna move, I'm gonna zoom out a little bit so you can see some fish. Now there's some fish that are way off in the distance that you can kind of see already, like a whole school of fish. Um, and then on the side here, there's a couple other fish that are swimming um, in this in this thing. So I feel like the coral doesn't look like coral unless you put it in the context of these fish. Are there more fish in? Oh, there's a couple. Clowns. Yeah. There's clowns. Left. In that bottom corner. left. Oh, thank goodness. Because I don't want to zoom out. I don't want to zoom out too far. Um, because then you won't be able to see any. It'll be too far away. I. Let's see. Let me get, make sure Bruce is in here. Sweet. And Gil's back. There might be another Gil. That works. Did it work? Hey. All right. Welcome, man. Um, glad you're back. It's muting you. Um, okay. So let's do these. Um, let's let's fill this thing out. Um, you can fill it out with. Um, I don't know if you, I don't know if. Uh, Miles, if you want to show your drawing, but we drew some of these other textures um, and you can definitely get some fish in here. So we've got this fish up here, which is kind of cute with, um, uh, you yeah, know, he's kind of got an oval body Ooh. with like this fan tail. Two Brenda, little at the hold bottom. it right there. I'm gonna start with that guy. Nice. I really like that seahorse and the colors you used with the stripes, for the stripes of it. Nice. Mm -hmm. Who was that? Who's that? Who's showing right now with color? That was Brenda. Nice Declan, job. let's see. Hold that okay. a little further. There you go. And freeze it. Well done. I like that right, texture. Um, all right. So um, there's a little bit of ground. I don't know if you can see the ground here, but there's um, the way that Maggie, the artist's name is Maggie Swanson. And the way that she shows sand is just by doing these little dots. And then to show that it's like a ground plane, she actually puts in starfish. So everybody's okay. cor everyone's coral is going to be positioned differently. Hi, um, Mr. Twist. You out of here? Yeah. yeah. Bye. All right. It's two o'clock now. Bye. Bye. I'll see you guys next week. Um, you want to think about the starfish as like five triangles. So I usually do the one in the middle, triangle first left side triangle, right side triangle, and then two leg triangles. I know that's not actually how a starfish needs to be seen um, or even thought of. Wow, good work, dude. Stacey, we got a couple of people on their way out showing some pics. Uh, Benjamin, hold that a little, there you go, a little closer this time to the camera, to the screen and freeze it. Nice, nice. And let's see if I missed anyone. Bye bye. Um, waiting. Let's see. I'm taking a peek here. <laughs> this is hilarious. I, I've I've taught starfish many times. I've never thought about like Patrick. Like it's so obvious that you should do starfish this way. But William, wow. You start <laughs> with you start with a triangle for the head. Nice. Do a triangle for one arm and then a triangle for each leg. Well done, William. <laughs> you just kind of like, you kind of hope that they all, that they all match up. Um, Maggie's code for the texture of the starfish are just some dots. So the, um, the scene that we're gonna build is each individual object isn't particularly complex, but when you put them all together, it should make something that's pretty cool. Um, she looks like for the her starfish, she put a dot in the middle, and then I think she made a series of dots going into each limb. So a dot into the, mm -hmm. and that's not how I did my other ones. So part of when you're drawing, you learn things that you, didn't see before. So I was kind of putting dots randomly and I don't think, oh, I like that shadow. Who's that with the shadow? That thing's awesome. Oh, hold that up, Finn. And freeze. Nice, Finn. Yes, very <clears throat> nice. All right, that's good, that's good. Um, I'm gonna put in like these little teeny fish wherever I can. 
And I don't know if I'm going to, I'm doing it off the screen. So hopefully you guys' screens are big enough. Mine's kind of far away, but you can see these fish. There's a, you know, like almost like a, um, like a football shape, but don't connect both ends. Just connect the one. And then you can do a tail, almost like you did the starfish, like two triangles, top and bottom. And then from there, you can attach a top fin and a bottom fin. And I think the only way that they drew that fish was just putting a dot for the eye. So the idea is, is that the individual fish is not hard. The challenge is how do you make all the other fish look exactly the same? And I hope that uh, I'm able to do that. So I'm gonna start with the same process. So I'm gonna start from the front, make my football shape. And that football is gonna like be close to the same size um, as my other I one. Have to go. It can be a little bit big, it can be a little bit small. Um, no, have a, have have a good wig. Is that the... Um, is that the first group? This is group one. This is the turnover. Cool. Um, we'll have a great week, y'all. Um, so the school of fish, the way the fish are impressive is if there's many of them. And I think there's like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. There's nine there. And then there's these larger ones. So we'll add the, we'll add the, we'll add the big ones too, but I'm starting small um, just so I can kind of get a feel for, um, how to make a fish, almost like get my confidence up. Practice making uh, multiple versions and I can place them really wherever I want. So like depending on where, where your, your coral is, will nice, be where your fish go. Thank you. So you're always trying to make the picture look balanced and natural. Trevor? Yes, Dace. Can I sneak a pick in really, really fast of a really cool starfish? Yeah, of course. Do you want to want to show it? Wow. How cool is that? It's a starfish. With like the red tips and red center. I, yeah. I, really, I wish I had. Where did he Hold on. Your mom. I got to mute Johnny over here. All right. <clears throat> yeah, upon entry, it's very helpful if you guys can remember to mute, but don't worry about it. Um, all right, I'm going to make three more fish. And then I think I'm going to make at least, like, I've got a, a bunch of room up in this corner. I think I'm going to draw this fish next. Um, there is a bat. Do you guys see the purple bat? That is, yeah. not, it's not meant to be in the picture. This is just like a, a hidden image. Um, it's part of the... Um, it's part of the job. So Maggie, Maggie Swanson makes these images for highlights. So she makes these drawings. And part of the game is that there's hidden pictures. So if you guys see any, there's like a cowboy hat down here. Um, I think I saw. There's a bottle on the reef. There's a key. There's a key. Ah, uh, yes. Key over the key. Here. There's a baseball there's a piece bat. Brush. There, there's a pin in the bushes. I know. I see the clothes. I just noticed the clothes pin. Oh, is there's that the bottle? the baseball bat. bat. The bottle. That's the baseball bat. There's a paintbrush in that, the, that's like the bottle. bottle. The paintbrush is, the paintbrush is actually really beautiful. Um, the clownfish kind of um, is like almost camouflaged inside that type of, whatever that seaweed is. Um, and the way that they made the seaweed, she made the paintbrush kind of match it. See how it's like, yeah. that's how she hides it. Yeah. It's a that. type of um, coral. Oh, it is actually coral too? Yeah. What is the type, of, what is that picture to the right of the right seahorse? It looks like part of a mushroom, part of a, oh my I don't gosh. know what. That thing? It's tail. Yeah. That is a mushroom. It that's is? A, yeah, that's a hidden picture, Stacey. Okay. I was wondering why that looked so weird. It didn't look like the coral. Right. I honestly, when I saw that, I thought it was a mistake. I, I did, I actually thought it was a mistake. Um, so boys, we're in a position where I kind of taught the coral. Um, it's I the seahorse tail. I taught tail. the starfish. Um, it's a seahorse tail. Book. And, you know, there's, there's a book at the bottom. I, I didn't draw the book either. Um, you can kind there's of- There's a tooth. You can figure out where to take this. You see a tooth. A tooth. What kind of tooth? No, there's that's a, a hat. There's a heart. Oh, that's a saw. There's a saw. Yeah. 
She packs oh, yeah, oh. you could see the tooth in the hat. <laughs> I see that. I see a Christmas tree. A Christmas tree. If, I, if there's a Christmas tree in there and I didn't see it, I'm going to be annoyed. I see a cricket bat. I see a, I see, um, a bridge. Oh, yeah, I think the there cricket, is bat, a Christmas cricket bat might be a, um, might be a bottle. Like a bottle. The Christmas tree is in between the heart and the bat. And the broom is touching the. I see a pen. Oh, I see it. I see a key. It's made out of all the coral. So does anyone hear that like burping sound? Could we thank I you, know. Trevor? I just had you guys just have to remute yourselves after you talk. I love it when you talk though. Um, all right, so I I don't know where everybody's picture is, but you can see that my rectangle is limited. So I can only fit things within my rectangle um, that fits on the screen. So you guys may want to put your coral inside of a rectangle so that you don't have to fill out the entire sheet. If you've already started expanding and drawing on the whole sheet, well then you've got like five minutes to like fill that whole thing out. Um, maybe 10 minutes, five, 10 minutes. I really want to do that. There's like a really good um, seahorse that I want to draw together now that everybody's here and everyone's kind of getting warmed up. So take about five minutes, make your underwater scene um, interesting. You know, there's like some plants, you know, that might go at the bottom. I'm going to keep fit, you know, putting in these fish. And you can stick with me and what I'm doing, or you can kind of break off and start drawing your, um, your own, you know, your own thing. You can put hidden mm -hmm. pictures in there. I mean, I think this key is actually pretty funny. Um, I don't know. I guess I would put it here. I put the key in mine. I just put a treasure box in there also. Oh, nice. I like that idea. Okay, so I'm going to use the, the key, um, the textured part of the key, to hide it in the coral. So did you guys see that? So I did up, down, up, down, up, down, up, down. So my coral now is going to have a similar look as the uh, edge of the key. So that's like kind of how I'm hiding it. What else is there? I can put the coral on this side. Mm -hmm. I, I, did I draw the bat? I drew the bat on a different page. I don't know if I'm gonna include the bat. Maybe I will. I love the um, the idea of the paintbrush. So I'm gonna do the handle of the paintbrush. Then I'll do the wooden part that holds the bristles in. Oh, I and missed then, that. Then I'm gonna do the, the way that the artist draws these bristles is specifically set up so that it mimics the look of that coral that we were looking. So now I can draw the coral in the same way that I drew the bristles. I'm gonna make them a little bit bigger so that the person can differentiate, but then, and then that's where that fish is. The clownfish hides in there too. It's a pretty tail. Mm -hmm. Am I gonna fit this guy in here? Maybe. Sure. Oh, he's smiling. I know. <laughs> it's a happy fish. Do the stripes. Yeah, the stripes are gotta the do stripes the stripes. also look a little corally. Did I do the fins? I guess there's fins at the top. Why does mine look so derpy? So what was that word? Uh, derpy? It looks derpy. like he's like, yeah, he doesn't look well. <laughs> he looks a little sick. <laughs> um, but I'm gonna, I put the fish in there so that I can now do these curving coral. And a uh, gentleman, I don't know if you noticed this, but if you look at the way these miniature pieces of coral, like the way they S curve and the way they wiggle and the way that they stay the same thickness the entire time, it's actually a lot like the coral that we did in the very beginning. Um, it's just on a much smaller scale. So the, you know, the way that you can draw these fish where you have to make the football of each fish about the same size and then the tail about the same size and then the fins, you know, that is like an actual art skill. 
um, even though the drawing might, even though these these corals down here might be, um, you know, it's just, you know, they look like like spaghetti strings, but like in order for it to read as all the same thing, all the spaghetti has to be about the same thickness, and that is not always easy to do. So, that's the uh, that's my. That's just like the kind of one of the skills for the day is if you can attempt to create relatively simple objects, but consistently repeat them so that they all like can be distinguishable and interesting. So let me do this. Um, just like I'm the, uh, just like the starfish. What's that? No, I was just going to say this is a form of tubular coral. I'm just trying to find out exactly what type of tube coral it is. So this is the clothespin and the clothespin seemingly doesn't have like any, like any hidden, any, anything hidden about it. So I could make a new plant that looks kind of like the tip of the clothespin. Does that make sense? So I can, I can like further camouflage it and I might even, maybe I'll put that same plant you know, over on this side. More clothespin, I'll call it the clothespin plant. So the clothespin is now hidden amongst similar type of lines. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Oh, and Trevor, this is kind of interesting. Yeah, gentlemen, two minute warning on this one, and then we're gonna switch over and draw the uh, the seahorse, because I think we'll have time. Like I know we'll have time. Um, I'm gonna put this this fish that's up in this left in this left hand corner. I'm gonna put it in this right hand corner, and then we'll call it a day. Um, what'd you say, Stace? Oh, I was simply going to say that uh, the tube coral on the bottom left. If you were to put circles on the tops as if they were hollow, yeah, that's a whole different type of coral. So you're saying if I went like this. As if the tops were open, yes, yeah, yeah. yes, yes. I mean, I kind of like that a lot. And it's one like, of those would actually, that. there you go. Is there like a little, like a snake, like a, a little worm that lives in there or something? No, it's complete, it's completely hollow. Mm. Oh, I don't know if anything lives in it. Okay. I, I like I, I like the idea. It like makes it just takes that drawing to like another level. Now they look like fingers on a fingernail. Like look like fingernails on a finger. Ooh, yeah. Well, one of one of those is called an earthenware, earthen uh, coral, like earthenware pots. How they're uh, hollow. I don't. I think yeah. I think the and the earthenware stuff that you're talking about. I don't think it's mobile. Like I think it's fixed. Whereas the, the I know the coral that the clownfish live in like moves around and waves moves. with the water. Yeah. Yes, you are correct. This is true. <clears throat> okay, um, let me finish this fish. I'm doing the forehead down into the upper lip, which is bigger than the lower lip. And then this guy feels like he's almost like the shape of a marshmallow. Get these two cute little fins in the front, those two miniature footballs. And then he's got a round belly in the bottom. He's got a round uh, arc for his spine. And then we'll pinch in at the tail, pinch in at the bottom tail. And then I'll make the, uh, like almost like the tail be like a fan. <clears throat> he needs like some mohawk fins at the top. <laughs> um, he has a side fin, but he needs some gills too. Where would the gills go? <laughs> I don't know. Maybe they, maybe they are too far back. And then I think these little tick marks are actually look like uh, um, scale. scale. Yeah, and I had not drawn scales in my other fish because they were so small. Scale. scale and it's uh, two sixteen, Trevor. Two sixteen. Okay. And we have everybody until at least two thirty, minimum two thirty. Um, so hopefully we get far enough along on the, uh, ooh, look at that. Uh, we'll, we will get far enough along on the, 
Seahorse. The Seahorse isn't actually that hard. Um, it might take a while. You might have to finish it um, after class or at home, but you'll know enough in order to finish it. <clears throat> All right, boys, let's get a new piece of paper. That was good. Um, maybe, Stace, can you, does anybody want to show what they have in their rectangle? And then, Stacey, can take your pictures. Oh, Declan, hold that nice and still. Nice. Thank you. I love those starfish. Wow, look at all those and fish. That's a whole Henry, school. Hold that nice and still. Very good. These are great. And let's see. All right, boys. Thank you. Anyone else who'd like to share? And if you'd rather share, um, but not in the class and would like to send it to Mr. Twist, of course, feel free to do that. That is an option. That is a very, very good option, actually. <clears throat> yeah, have your folks send it to me. All right, let me see if I can find this thing. The whole, this whole book is, uh, this whole book is like underwater, is like beach scenes or underwater scenes. And then I saw this, I saw this. Uh, Teddy hasn't started it yet. We haven't started. You're still good. Yeah. Good timing. Where is this set? Oh, there he is. This thing's crazy. Yes. It's oh. fabulous. I hope so. I hope it's fab. Can you zoom out a bit? I think I think I can. I think I can, I think I can. I think I can, I think I can. All right, there it is. Um, boys, it's actually a lot easier than you might think. Um, so the nice thing about this is that we're, we're gonna break it down really simply. So I need everybody to get your pencils, get fired up, let's get this thing going. Um, the first thing that we need to do is we're gonna turn his whole head, like literally his entire head, into a very simplified piece of pie. So that is, the, for his whole head is going to be a piece of pie. That looks good. Stacey, we get that one picture. He's just sure, sure, sure. I don't Finn, have any, that hold that back just a tiny bit and freeze it. <clears throat> All right. You. So we've got the the shape of the this the shape of this piece of pie. Although imagine like the piece of pie with like the uh, like the tip that was cut off, or like a piece of pizza that when you cut the you like ate the very end of it. Ajax, bring that back. Then the next form. In, in my opinion, the next form is the hardest form. Other people think it's easy, but this is why a seahorse is called a seahorse. Um, it's the relationship between the trapezoid of the head and the neck. So we're, we're gonna do the curve of the neck. And this form, you wanna think about like a, you know, like a rook in, uh, you know, in like chess. Um, it's the rook, right? Yeah. Um, it's curves long in the back and it's short in the front. All right, we haven't put in the eye. You can put in a circle for the eye if it makes everybody feel better. Um, and then the next form is gonna be an oval. And, you know, it's like the, and when I say an oval, I'm kind of talking about an egg. So let's just put this egg, however big you make the egg is gonna determine um, how big this seahorse is. Um, my neck is also a little aggressive, but I'm feeling good about it. Um, it can be, it can be totally different. So we've got the head, the neck, the body, um, and then we're going to do the tail. <clears throat> and the way we're going to try, we're going to transition out of the tail is we're going to have this, it's almost like a funnel. It's like a funnel shape. Um, and it's going to be kind of like a trapezoid. So it doesn't turn right into the, the, to the tail, like a, uh, you know, like a snake's tail. Um, it has to transition out of the body. So it's almost like a, like a, the cone, like a snow cone with like a, a scoop of uh, you know, ice on the top. Um, and then from there, we're gonna curl all the way around. And this guy, just like in the other picture, this guy is actually curling and holding onto a piece of seaweed. So I'm gonna see if I can fit my thing on the page. So remember we did the coral, we did the outside. So we're gonna build the, the this curve, this curve, this curve, this curve. And then it's got a spiral all the way into the center. And the spiral is the is like this form that you get to draw 
Um, it's the way nature kind of grows. It's like the golden section. It's um, seashells grow in this spiral. Um, ferns grow in this spiral. So it's probably gonna be really clunky um, and hard in the beginning, but the key to drawing spirals is it starts thick, you know, the body starts thick, it gets smaller and the spiral gets progressively smaller as you get to the center. And once you found that tip, it gets progressively wider as you round out again. Um, the reason uh, the Lord made erasers is to make corrections. The other reason ex uh, they exist is to, um, um, you can actually draw with the erasers too. So I'll, I'll show you what I mean by that. But um, how is the spiral going? Is everybody freaking out yet? Um, this is just the first attempt at the spiral. Yes, you did it. Yes, good. Okay, cool. We're, we're good. Um, let's see, what should we do next? Should we like go into the head? No, let's start doing the, uh, let's do the grid on the body. That looks good. Spiral looks good. Um, I didn't even think about that until right now, but, um, somebody drew the piece of, um, like the piece of, uh, seaweed that he's holding on to. And that might be helpful too. Oh, that's good. Now he's holding it. Now he's like pinching this seaweed. Okay. We're going to come into the face. The face has got a couple different sections, but um, let's break up the grid of the, uh, of the whole body. So the, the whole body can be broken into the two outside lines, which is what we call the silhouette. So it's the back of the neck into the body and then the back of the spine into the tail. We can do the front of the neck into the chest and the torso, and then that goes into the front of the tail. So that's the first, that's the first two lines, the outside line and the inside line. Um, outside, outside on both, you know, front and back, I should say. Now, um, we just have to break that section down into, um, you know, three parts. So we'll do two more lines in the middle and they run long ways. And then it goes all the way back up to the head. And you want to kind of evenly space them out. You know, it's obviously the spacing will be wider, you know, as the body's wider. And then <clears throat> they all converge um, into, you know, one consistent line um, and become part of the front of the tail. So that's good. <clears throat> um, now we've got a, you know, like I said, it was a grid. So we've got these lines that run long ways. Now we can do lines that run sideways. So um, there was already a line that separates the neck from the body. So then I can make my next one. We can make them evenly spaced. Looks like they get a little wider. Um, so there's the line above the neck and there's the line below the neck. And then it's almost like a train track um, where when you get into the end, you get the, it's almost like a train track going around a mountain getting further away from you. So the spaces, um, like the spaces get progressively smaller but they do it in a in like an evenly spaced way. It's almost like it's just like a candy cane almost. It reminds me of a candy cane that I don't know what at the bottom. <clears throat> um that's fun. That's great actually. Uh, there is one back, there's this one beautiful back fin. And that is like, it's almost like, uh, again, a music pick or, you know, it's a fan. So it's got a straight side, straight angled side, and then a curved back. And that's got straight lines in it. I'm just, at this point, I'm trying to find things that really look like 
that are kind of defining characteristics of seahorse um, and that are, you know, not too hard. Looking good. Um, yes, that looks really good. Um, if you guys made these two lines um, in the middle somehow, like too close together, you could probably squeeze in another line. Because these guys are seen in the round. So I'd rather, I'd almost rather have that extra one in there. All right, let's get the face in. And I'm nervous that we're, um, well, no, we, got, we still have plenty of time. Let's do this face. This guy is so wild, man. Seahorses really are wild creatures. They're beautiful, but they are, they are weird. Um, it almost looks like he's got a mask on. It looks like he's got like an, an eclipse in his eye. All right, let's maybe we should just go from like front to back. Um, he's got something that resembles like a mouth. You know, when I say resembles a mouth, I mean like it looks like there's an upper lip, and then it looks like there's a lower lip. Yeah, it also it makes me think of nostrils and a mouth all at the same time. Yeah, it's definitely curious. Um, let's follow, um, we can almost like see this seahorse in like almost like a mask, but let's follow the front of the face first. So we're gonna do his long snout. And then um, just like we have like structure, like bone structure around our eye, protecting our eye, <clears throat> the profile of the face, it's almost like this is like an eyebrow. And then that quickly turns into a horn which is kind of cool. So I, I mean, I put my circle in one spot, but I'm gonna make my snout and the arc of my brow, and then I'm gonna put my eye underneath that. So you can do the outside line, you can do an eye, you know, a pupil in the middle, and then you can do like an iris around the outside of that. It's, I mean, it is, it is something else, man. You gotta make the, uh, you gotta have the pupil kind of stand out. The, the pupil is the black center. And then the ring around that black center is the iris. So if I just drew that in here on the bottom, if the pupil, which is the black center, then you have what looks like, you know, almost like a, it's almost like it's a black sun or something, but like the, the, the light glow around that pupil, that is in fact the iris. And then the outside of the rim of the eye, it's almost like the eye is framed out with like another black circle. And the reason I drew it larger is because the, in my drawing, the eye was just so small and I kind of messed it up. So I'm gonna erase, <laughs> I'm gonna erase it because I wanna fix it. Um, those are the kind of the parts of the eye. Start with the pupil in the middle, give it the light iris on the outside and then it's got a black frame. And you can also give um, like what would be the equivalent of eyelids, you know, like the like a border, like a, um, you know, it's almost like the thing that would, if he needed to like close his eyes, that he's got this, he's got this like double ring around his eye. It's actually really, a, it's probably one of the most beautiful parts of this drawing. That's why it's like, I, I saw this drawing, I was like, this is just really, it's just really good. Okay, so there's the outside of the eye. I'm going to give it the black, the uh, rings around the outside in my actual drawing. Something very compelling about this, this seahorse eye. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> and if yours, if your eye is a little wobbly, it's like, it's, it's okay. Like don't uh, try not to, um, try not to freak out. Yeah. Nice. And chances are it's going to be big, which is fine. It's more, the better to see with. Um, okay, so before I do the um, go from the horn down, I'm uh, going to do what I would call essentially the upper lip. So I'm going to go from this mouth or this nose, as Stacy was saying, and I'm going to curl up this side. And this is going to be like kind of the separation between the upper part of the jaw and the lower part of the jaw. And, you know, it feels so much like a mask to me. Um, it's like this weird wave that kind of connects back up to the original... Um, this original horn and then the lower jaw and the lower part of the mouth you know is definitely in shadow so i you know and i think it's worth it to you know start shading 
I think we are going to need to do some shading. So we'll do that bottom jaw. Um, we could even like, remember we were talking about the coral where like there are all these like little smiley face marks. Um, inside our seahorse, it looks like there's a lot of dots, a lot of like speckling and, you know, especially in the face. So I just want to put a couple dots in here just so I can anticipate what the, you know, the rest of the seahorse might look like. And if you look into the body, there's like dots everywhere. This thing is like, this guy is going to be full of dots. There's going to be kind of fun. Um, I love making dots because they're kind of, um, the, if you want to shade something, instead of shading side to side or like blending it out, you just add more dots. And it can be like very meditative. It can be very like calming and soothing in terms of, you know, when you make drawings, adding lots of dots. And it makes it look interesting and almost makes it look more complicated than it really is. Yeah. With these each individual marks and you can be kind of disciplined about it. Um, you know, if you're using little, like even like the, your pencil tip, you know, can help determine what your mark is gonna be. And my mark, my dot that could be different from your dot. It looks good, man. You look great. Yeah, thanks yeah, for showing thanks. them up. Um, I'm trying to think if there's anything else I need to remove this. I think some people might have been showing, but I wasn't looking at the right. Yeah, thing. I missed. I did, hadn't didn't see anyone. Up and down. Hold on. Let's see <clears throat> what I can see. Um, all right, I'm gonna. If you you can show Stacy if you want, I'm gonna move on to the. Um, there's this. Uh, I'm trying to think what it what reminds me of. It's like, and it could be gills. These could be like complex, like irregular gills. But, you know, if you think about like a fish, you know, a fish has its head, you know, with the lips and then it's got its uh, eyes the same way. And then his head is cut off. And then you do have gills like on the side, you know, mm -hmm. and fin and then a fin behind it. And then you know, there's all these looks. So um, he's got to breathe somehow. And he breathes water. So I'm just going to say that the next arches, series of arches, and they're like, you know, in a, in a way that like the, uh, the gills of a fish are like very smooth and very consistent and very regular. I'm just going to say that the, um, the gills on a seahorse are, you know, not quite as... They look like regular. bones. They look like bones. Yeah, you know, they make me think of prehistoric... Um, uh, Anim parts of a prehistoric animal, like, like a land armor. animal. Like armor. They, they remind me of armor from a, uh, you know, like a, like a certain type of uh, dinosaur. Yes. Like yes. or a stegosaurus or something, maybe even like a stegosaurus. Mm. Um, in between these layers, there is a, you know, like dark parts. And then those dark parts turn into uh, dots. It's a, uh, it's kind of actually a beautiful thing when it goes, you know, it goes dark and then as it gets lighter, it turns into different dots. Oh, let's see, Teddy. There you go, freeze. Wow, you got that whole pattern in there, nice. Quite nice. Mm -hmm. All right. So, yeah. Wow. Look at that. The armor even goes up above the head. I had not even seen that. That's it's like horns. Well, Makes there's me a sec I mean, there's like a second horn. There's definitely a second horn. Yeah. And to the point where, like, I think scientists might even call them horns. Oh, and look, there's a little fin behind. Let's say I the. Saw that too. So there you we've go. got his. We've got his fan yeah. fin. He's got his fan fin down here, and then he's got this little weird ear fin. Yeah. That's amazing. Hmm. That's great. This looks prehistoric, the whole head. It, it does. It does. So I'm going to develop some more dots. Um, I do want to go over in the next like couple of minutes. I do want to be able to get the um, the way, the, a couple ways of doing the um, you know the the gridding, because 
we're going to get to draw with our eraser. So, and I'll show you what I mean. So we've got the thick dark lines on the outside. <clears throat> we got the grid and they pop out a little bit. Whenever you get these, the, the horizontal lines, they stick mm. out a little bit far from the, uh, the body. And then just like See that, that petty that's little wings. further away. You can, you can link them up. Excellent. <laughs> nice. I hadn't seen that either. So when these horizontal lines go across and they get to a, a, a point, then it's almost like a bat wing where it caves in on itself. Yeah. Rather than swelling out, it swells in. It's making me think of a spider web. It's totally spider web like. <clears throat> um, and then we can start to shade in the insides of these squares with more dots. And then the kicker is, is that once you fill in these squares, remember earlier I was talking about you can draw with an eraser. Once all these dots go in, then you can, well, I can't do it yet. It'll be a, the, our triumphant ending. You fill in these dots and then basically the lines that you used to draw the uh, grid, we're gonna erase the middle of them. Uh -huh. Trevor, did you show your seahorse? Did I possibly miss that? What? You did you show your seahorse that you painted? Oh my gosh! Um, no, I didn't. Please do that. before that class is that. over. I know, like I said, the boys would love to see that, and I always enjoy seeing that. So, I did this painting in this class uh, a couple weeks ago. I'm just so into these little gridding marks. I wonder if I should come up with a different way. Instead of doing dots, I wonder if I should do a spiral. Mm. Because the spiral is just so much faster. I think as long as it's consistent, it will read really nicely. I hope so. Right, I'm gonna take a break and come back. Hold on, let me go grab this, my painting of the seahorse. Great. Does anyone want to show so far? We want to just hold out perhaps till we're at the end. Oh, wow, look at that color. You see Hold it? on, Brendan. Hold that further from the screen. Keep going back away from the screen. Well, one second, I'm trying to get this background off. Okay, this adorable, adorable puppy, Oh. A little further away. Is it good? Oh, okay. There you go. It, the other side is kind of bleeding through because I used marker to color in my stuff. That's okay, but you need to go a little. There you go. Whoop. Come back. Come back. Further away and freeze. Nice. Very nice. And I like how you got that curve of its tail. Um, so, gentlemen, these look great. Um, what I did not anticipate, um, what I did not anticipate was how dark the seahorse is. When I see the horses, I don't further like further from the screen, really Henry. A little further Ooh, away so from jading. the screen. There and hold. Thank you. Very nice, Henry. These are really, really great. Um, so, gentlemen, the last thing we, the last thing I'm going to kind of like speak about is if you see how the lines are light up above here, and then I did dark lines for my grid, um, my pencil, my pencil like erases well. Um, and I hope you all have good erasers. So I'm trying to get the border to be dark. So I'm just erasing you the middle. You don't have any erasers. I know. Well, then this would not be a good technique. I mean, you don't need to, um, you, they don't, they, you don't need to be light lines. I mean, that's how this artist made them, but you can keep them dark. Um, I just had this ability to erase with my- uh, Declan, if hold you that up again. eraser, there's nothing you can do. Declan, bring that up, Declan. No, look at this. Hold that nice and still. 
Yeah. Great. It's really good. So, gentlemen, I, mean, I came. I came up with my spirals. It's like you, can, you can you can any way you want. Um, whatever whatever yeah. technique works well. That's really okay, awesome. Ethan. Hold that nice and still. A little yes, further away. There See, you go. You saw, it, you saw it as being dark too. I and I just I looked at it and I was like, this is a light seahorse, but it really is a dark seahorse with some light lines on it. And I like the kelp that you drew and the bubbles coming out of its mouth. Oh, look at the bubbles. Yeah. I got to do some bubbles. All right, I'm going to zoom back that. out. It's Let's important, see. I think, to see Johnny, them, hold that back a little bit. I, ha Johnny. I have to go yeah. now. Is it time? All right, Brendan. Yeah, um, bye. See you guys. Very um, nice. You guys can stick around, stick around. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to add some kelp. Johnny, nice. I like that curve, the curvature of every line. Very <laughs> nice. All right, boys. Thanks for thanks for sticking this one out. I appreciate it. I have it? to go. Okay. Next week. Yeah, I have yeah, to go too. All right, everybody. Bye, guys. We'll week. see you next time. Mm -hmm. Stacy, did you get to draw the seahorse by any chance? No, no. That's okay. Don't worry about it. It's all right. I um, I just can't believe how dark the seahorse is. Yeah. I mean, yeah, I really I love this. It, and that's why drawing the eraser is so helpful because you can all the lines that I was thinking I was making are actually light instead of dark. It's fascinating. And the use of the spiral is way easier than the dots. Is it? Yes. Yeah. But then once you have the grid, then it just becomes like a coloring exercise, which is also really nice. I've never been so uh, interested in seahorses before. The anatomy, I mean, really, or this particular drawing, I think is great. So this artist is named Joe S E I D I T A. George Sedita. Bye. See you, Declan. Bye, Declan. See you next um, week. So George Sedita. I'll look up some of his other stuff. I'm sure he's, you know, most of the time these people, the guys that submit to this make many, make multiple. So okay. Um, so I'll look up some of his other stuff and he, it's way more naturalistic than, um, some of the other ones. Mm -hmm. Um, all right. Um, I guess it's just like, I think it's just a couple dudes left. Um, yeah, Henry, uh, William, Henry, well, it's two forty-five. So I don't know if you guys can see, but, um, Stacey, I'll give you a call in a little bit. Okay. Ciao. Sounds